Well, welcome to this episode of Clinically Pressed. We are continuing on our board of director interviews and we are here with Joel Detweiler. Uh, I've known Joel for quite a while um, through multiple um, different ways, but uh, worked together when he was a uh, football coach at a local university and I was the athletic trainer with them. I uh, enjoyed those times together and then now uh, work with him as uh, financial planning and then uh, wealth advisement, which is obviously a good thing, but um, he has done a lot even just from that little bit of an uh, intro in his career as it relates to the health and wellness and fitness and then also now kind of taking a whole completely different look at it but then still being tied into sports uh, we were just talking off off recording about recruiting uh, for his daughter and how that's starting which I'm sure will be interesting being on the other side of it now <laughs> um, having recruited many of people in your time but before sure. we get kind of talking more about the board just wanted to turn it over to you to kind of fill in your background because it really is unique um, in a lot of different ways yeah I guess that or I'm not sure if my parents are real proud of uh, you know <laughs> still paying off just finished paying off student loans that uh, for degrees I don't use so I'm sure they're excited about that <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> but yeah so it's it's I've been fortunate uh, to meet a lot of really cool people through the whole process um, and I think it's really shaped shaped who I've been able to to become and and I have a lot of really good mentors that's one thing I'm pretty happy with and pretty proud of or I guess I feel lucky to have uh, have that those people in my life but um, starting off grew up in a small town Wisconsin Oregon Wisconsin just south of Madison a uh, small town kid three sport athlete went to University of Wisconsin Platteville uh, played football there pretty much majored in football I think the first couple of years sure. you know didn't I mean honestly was in uh, had was a was an engineering major, but don't know that uh, that I really had that set necessarily. I think it was like I like construction, so I'm going to go move things around and Fair. see what happens. But yeah. um, but played football all four years there. Got my engineering degree there in civil engineering, um, and then decided I went and worked in. Uh, We've worked in on an oil refinery in Houston, Texas. I've worked in Chicago, Illinois, different things like that as an engineer. And then uh, came back, went to grad school for engineering at Madison. Um, had an opportunity to be a research assistant there, which was pretty cool. Met a lot of good people there. Um, you know, did some bartending in Madison, so I got to do the small town, you know, yeah. small town player thing. And then got to the Big Ten school for grad school. And all good experiences, that I think, like where I met, you know, continue to. To be with people that are, to ten, I continue to communicate with people that I met during all those times. Sure. I think that's, you know, the, the friend group that I've got is, is really pretty cool. So, um, in that time, started playing indoor football a little bit in Madison and bumped into a coach who was now at Wisconsin Platteville and a new staff. Somehow, over a few beers, he talked me into becoming a football coach and quitting my engineering job that I had after I got a grad school. Um, that turned into a college football coaching career at Platteville, uh, Warburg College, and then at, at UWL, which was the last place I coached. Um, during that time, what kind of helped me progress, and I think is where we maybe like the strength and conditioning aspect of things and personal wellness is really, really where it came through. Um, Platteville needed a strength coach and nobody wanted to do it, so I said, well, I'll do it, and then started looking at and working with the CSCS, working with USAW, started applying physics <clears throat> to Olympic lifting. Olympic lifting probably quickly became my favorite thing to do. Sure. Um, and then how you apply physics to the body became pretty good with uh, everything from sports performance, acceleration, force production, all the different stuff with that. that um, I wasn't an expert in the, you know, I, I think I barely passed the CSCS exam, quite frankly, sure. when it came down to it, because <laughs> I studied the book and that was it. Yep, I didn't, yep. have, didn't have an at and fizz or anything like that, but developed a real appreciation for how the body moves, right? And um, also married a physical therapist during that time, too. So then all of a sudden you've got all these things kind of working there you go. <laughs> what's going on, but really saw how you could develop great relationships with kids. Um, and then also um, how you could help kids get better, you know, whether they were a starter or not a starter. And it basically like the strength of the herd got better as the, as the, the average kids got better and the good kids got better and so on and so forth. So, um, and then when I decided to get a coaching in 2016, stayed in town here. And as you mentioned, we've got 15 and 12 year old daughters now that COVID was a great time for us to work out together in the garage and we have our home gym and everything else. And, um, and like, as you know, I've grilled you on a few things and um, it's, <laughs> it just keeps coming back. Like sports has always been a part of our life. Wellness, I think, to a degree has always been part of our lives. Um, and that's what's, you know, 
you know, led to this whole thing. I think that it's something that uh, is, it's a long and winding road, but it's a, it's a pretty fun road to go on. Sure. So what made you want to join the board when I asked you sure. <laughs> slash yeah. requested yeah. Uh, to join? I think that it was, one, it was the people who are on the board sure. are very passionate about what they do. Yeah. Right. I think also the people on the board that I've had experience with were also people that knew how to collaborate and, you know, have helped me in the past in some way, shape, or form, or when I've collaborated with them in the past, yep. it's been an awesome thing. It's been really fun. And I think that is, um, it's unique to have the credentials, it's unique to have the experience, and it's unique to not have the ego that go with both. For sure. And that's a fun group to be part of. You know, from everybody on the board, you know, you, AJ, Deb, I think that that's, I mean, I can remember my last couple of years coaching, you know, AJ's there doing studies on the team. Yep. You're helping with, with, you know, run the team with me. And then we got Glenn and other people who are doing the different studies. And I think if you have egos involved there um, on either side, it's not successful. Right. And I think that, you know, the, the football program now has, has taken a, a pretty big leap. I think that the department has taken a leap in terms of that awareness of sports performance. Sure. I don't. Th I think that was the seeds of that were were sowed back when we first started just getting together, saying, yep. "Yeah, let's get this to work." Like this is like, yep. let's make this happen. You right. know, I think that was kind of cool. You kind of referenced this a little bit, just in kind of talking about your background. But what unique skills or experience, knowledge is knowledge um, connections do you bring to help with the goal of making the complicated simple and giving back to the community? Yep. Law number one, I hopefully I can, with, uh, you know, working, like, from a financial standpoint, I think mm -hmm. I can, you know, whether it's cash flow, how to work with, you know, it's like, how can we be beneficial? How can, like, what what we do be beneficial to someone in the community? Right. Right. And then, or how can we be beneficial to attract people to be part of the program? Right. To then help the rest of the community. Um, so from a financial standpoint, I'm not, like, the end-all wizard, but I think that I, you know, understand those. If I can understand that basic building block and how you can attract people through those means, then I actually have the, you know, I guess the, the certifications behind it to go say, okay, well, let's let's go work with this. That's, right. So I think bringing that to the table, one, is helpful. Um, but two, I, I, I like, like you said before, the collaboration of being able to, um, to help people and just the appreciation, I think, for, for what's going on. So, I mean, part of it is just being a good salesman, you know, being able to say, hey, here's what we do. Right. And it's, it's way easier to talk to somebody when you say salesman, I guess maybe it's sometimes a four letter word, but it, it also is the idea that if you talk to someone who's passionate about the project, yep. they may still be a salesman and trying to sell you. Like, right. I may go someplace and try and talk to a benefactor to say, hey, can we get your help? Right. But if I'm passionate and believe in the program, I think that's where. I can be of service, so to speak. You know, it's easier. I, I do sales every day. Right, right. I talk to people every single day. Yeah. But I think I'm successful when I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. For sure. And that's what I think is is probably hopefully what I bring. You know, I don't know if I say the most, but that's what hopefully I bring that to the party. So. Yeah, I know that's something that AJ <laughs> and I talked about a lot. Just it's we felt it would be easier to sell when you're doing the nonprofit because it just feels less salesy yep. even though you have to make those pitches and you know For like sure. I said get everybody involved but yep. because it's going to this good cause and this good thing like it just makes for me, it feels like a weight off of like, no, I'm not just sitting there and be like, oh, by the way, it's X. Like, yeah. yeah, it is, but it, here's what it's going to do, and I can feel good about that, yep. and that makes it a lot easier for me. No question. No question. I agree 100%. Uh, what have you seen in all your time doing things as the biggest barriers for people to try and get healthy or active or just generally improve their fitness or you know, well-being? I mean, for me specifically, you know, I just started to work out at a, at a gym locally, and I think that it is number one is confidence to walk into a gym if you mm -hmm. haven't done it for a while. Two is what you think other people are thinking of you. Sure. Um, I'm sure there's a one word vocabulary word for that, but I don't have it. <laughs> um, and I think that it, it's it, the perception of what you think others are thinking of you, right, is a huge hurdle to try and get over. And I think once you get to the point where you realize everyone else is thinking that, right. So it's culture of the gym or culture of the, whatever it is, gym, yoga studio, whatever it yep. is. I think it's the culture which is led by the person who's running the place, right. right, is number one. And then I think it is just like in investing, it's the 
tried and true. What is the method that's going to get you there? And it, it is not easy. You know, like I looked at it, like I'm 48 and I am, when I first started at the gym, I'm 236 pounds, right? It took me 48 years to get there, right? So there is no real magic pill. There is just like with investing, sure, there's, sure. No, there's no get rich quick scheme, right? It is, yeah. it is methodical doing it, you know, like, yeah, you might have, you know, 45% return one year, but you're probably going to have like negative 10 at one point in time, you know, and it's still going to average out to whatever, you know, let's get that 10% return and let's, you know, let's, let's chip away so that you go from 236 down to 210 over an eight month period, not over a 30 day period right. type of thing. So right. I think it's consistency. It is, um, perception, so getting over the first part, getting over the self-consciousness, and then having someone to lead you down the path of, uh, and it, eventually it has to be you with discipline, right? Yep, but you yep. need someone to help you get going. And uh, it is once it starts and you find that glitch, or find that, not that glitch, you find that niche, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. So. Absolutely. What has been one of the best resources that you found to help yourself uh, and potentially even to help others as it relates to We'll just call it maybe self improvement or you know however it may be. Um, best resources. And that could be anything. Yeah. Honestly, probably for me in particular, being an engineer mind and being kind of analytic and also maybe a little bit like techie, I guess to a degree, is like what what things can it's like our our CRM it's called, right? Or which is, it's like, you know, like using Salesforce or using some type of calendar system where you can, mm -hmm. like, I'm big on like checking the boxes. Like I like to see progress, you know, yeah, yeah. it's just a little bit of progress where it is, can you, you know, I'm a list maker, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. And it's, can you, and when I'm off the list, I'm off the rails, you know, and I'm all over the place. When I'm on the list, I'm not, I'm not always on the rails 100% of the time, but I am more than I'm not. Right, right? And I right. think that's helpful where it's, you know, probably the organization of my day just like I would do with freshman football players or I did myself as a freshman with my you know extremely wonderful first semester 2.38 GPA which yeah, I still yeah. remember um, put yourself on you know segment your day you know what am I doing for this what am I doing for that get yourself on that routine of making a list you know you, you have a structural routine that what you're doing during the day but then what are you getting done during that day because you feel much better at night as well too you know regardless of right. what's going on so Give yourself some freedom, but go earn the freedom. I think that was, you know, there's <laughs> plenty of analogies from college where it's like, I'm not going to drink beer during the week. I'm okay on the weekends, but if, sure. I, if, I, if I do good during the week, then I'm going to reward myself on there Saturday. There you go. So. <laughs> understand, I understand that. <laughs> Last question. Yep. You know, and what you do and then working with the board of Clinically Pressed, how do you make what is complicated simple? I think that um, one of my favorite ways to do it with clients, and I think what I bring to the board when we have the conversations, whether it's with benefactors or even just ourselves, when it comes to how do we finance things, where do we do, what do we do with the money, and so on and so forth, there's lots of different ways to talk about um, where money should go, what you should do with it, things like that. But as you've experienced, like, I'd like to draw pictures mm -hmm. right? where it's like, I mean, I almost am, I'm at the whiteboard, like within seconds if somebody asks me a question. Sure. And so how can you, how can you draw a picture, um, to show here's where this is going to go. Here's what this, I mean, there, a picture can, can be part of any conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do nutrition, you can do, uh, you know, lift and weights, you can do like, you know, the, the di and you can draw a free body diagram for doing a power clean. Like it's really easy to, but and if you get that, that visual, I think the, the way that you make things easier for people is how do they remember it the best, yes. right? And how yep. do you get that picture for yep. them? Not everyone is that visual learner, but it's hard to find people who aren't just a little bit, you know, can you create a memory hook somehow yep. for them? And I think that is, you know, so memory hooks and pictures are probably the best way that I know of, like to make the, the complicated, simple. I like um, it. In pretty much every phrase of what I've done, especially, you know, basically every phrase <laughs> since I was at Oregon High School, I'm pretty sure that some picture has helped me get the thing done. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, that's great. Well, we appreciate you being willing to be on the board, and we're looking forward to things that are coming. So thanks for taking the time and filling in a little bit of background about yourself. It's awesome. Appreciate you doing it.